Hello YouTube, my name is Eamon Collins and this is Beginner's Guide to GPG Messaging which is basically secure messaging. Lesson 1, Linux Introduction. Uh, first off a bit of a pre-op, what is, what is actually this course? Full featured tutorial on GPG emailing designed to take someone with no understanding of Linux or GPG to a point where they can use GPG messaging on Linux. Uh, prerequisites for this course, if you're going to go through this entire video series and do all the activities, this is what, you don't, what, what you'll have to need. You will need a computer you're willing to install Linux on. This could be a virtual machine if you don't have a spare computer laying around, or you don't want a dual boot. Uh, you, can, you, need to, you need to have a high school level understanding of the internet and of computer systems. You also need a working email account uh, that you're willing to use GPG on. Uh, if you want, you could create a new one for this course, I guess. Or you could just use, you know, your usual one, whatever. Course structure. Lessons one through three. The first three lessons are all about Linux and how to install it and how to use it. Uh, we'll get to why that's important in this lesson. Um, the last five lessons are all about GPG theory and uh, using GPG, so if you already know about Linux and creating secure passwords and installing and using Linux, then start from lesson four. If you don't know about any of the you know, uh, preparation stuff, then you'll want to sit the entire course. Okay, moving along. What is open source? Uh, to understand the meaning of open source, you first need to know a little bit about how software is created. Every program you've ever used was created with human readable source code. These are like blueprints for the program. Uh, programming languages you've probably heard of, C, Java, Python, although that's more of an interpreted language. Um, the source code is then compiled into an executable file that can be read by the CPU. So yeah, that's basically it. Uh, you see the human uh, human readable code on the left gets compiled into machine code, and then it gets run on your computer. That's pretty much how it happens. What open source means? Uh, open source is software in which the source code is available to the public. So anyone's allowed to view that human readable code. Anyone's allowed to inspect it, change it, compile it and redistribute alternative versions of it if they want. An example of open source software is VLC Media Player. If anyone wanted they could just take VLC's code and make their own version of VLC and give it their own name. You know you're free to do that. So that's basically what open source means. Uh, this is different from proprietary software where the source code is considered private property and any unauthorized attempts to copy, change, or compile new versions of that source code is theft. So an example of that would be Microsoft Office. You're not allowed to look at Microsoft Office source code. You're also not allowed to make your own version of Microsoft Office. Yeah. Uh, another important note about compilation, it happens one way. Source code is compiled into machine code. Reverse compilation doesn't happen, so you can't get Microsoft Office or Windows or whatever and then reverse compile it into the source code and figure out what the source code was. It doesn't really work that way. Moving on, what is Linux? Linux is a series of open source operating systems. An operating system is a platform that provides an environment for programs to be executed. Examples are Windows, OS X, and Android iOS as well. There's probably a few others. Uh, more specifically, Linux is an operating system kernel, so it's like the middle of an operating system. It's just the under the hood stuff that you don't really see. Uh, there are many distributions that are built on top of it. There are thousands actually. Uh, some examples of popular Linux distros are Ubuntu, Debian, Linux Mint, CentOS. There's a few other ones. I'm sorry if I didn't mention your favorite. Why are there thousands of versions of Linux? Basically because of copy left. This is the opposite of copyright. 
1990, some guy named Richard Stallman created the first general public license. Uh, and this was basically a license that people could put on their software to say, hey, this is owned by everyone. It's public property. Everyone's allowed to do whatever they want with it. Um, and I don't want it to be monetized at any point. And this was really revolutionary considering software was traditionally made by software vendors and then compiled and then sold to people. Uh, it wasn't just handed away. Anyway, a year later, a uh, 21-year-old guy named Linus Torvalds, I don't know if I pronounced that right, uh, announced his intention to create an operating system kernel released under GPL. So basically there are thousands of versions of Linux because everyone's allowed to take it and create something from it. You don't have to pay anyone. It's all GPL. Yep. Some popular examples of Linux are Android phones, ATMs, a lot of ATMs are built on Linux, web servers, Google, Facebook, eBay, tablet computers uh, that you order sandwiches off at McDonald's, they're probably built on Linux. Uh, yeah, just everything that's not really Windows or Mac is pretty much Linux, or some weird modified version of Linux. Here we see two glaring photos of uh, Richard Stallman on the left and Linus on the right. It's kind of glaring at us. Ugh, moving along. What is GNU? GNU! It's the name of the family of software released under GPL. It stands for GNU is not Unix. That's like a pun because it was meant to be like an open source version of Unix. What is Unix? It's a really outdated system nobody remembers. And yeah, it's kind of a weird name. You're not wrong in thinking it's weird. Why is Linux better for privacy and security? Because it's open source. The public's allowed to audit every line of code and examine it for security flaws or malicious features. Furthermore, if there is an issue with the code, anyone is free to take that code and make an alternative version of that software thanks to the GPL license. This is why open source software is generally more trustworthy and secure than proprietary systems. And you're wondering, can I just use Windows? Can I just use my OS X or something to do this? It would be so much easier. Uh, no, no, those systems are proprietary. Uh, with Windows, nobody except Microsoft is allowed to view the Windows source code. This makes it impossible for anyone to audit Windows for security flaws and malicious features. Furthermore, the software is not GPL. It is copyrighted, so nobody is allowed to make any alternative version of Windows if they are unhappy with it. Bummer, right? I wish I could make my own version of Windows. I'm not allowed to, though. I'll get sued. In September 2015, Microsoft released updates adding file telemetry to every version of Windows going back to Windows 98. This telemetry essentially reports pretty much everything you do on your machine, all the files you create, and you know, it just radios all that back to Microsoft so they can create an advertising database about you. It's just a fancy word for spying on you to make money off you. Uh, this is only one malicious anti-privacy feature that it contains. Uh, because it's proprietary, nobody can view the source code, like I said earlier, uh, it's impossible for anyone to look for, you know, malicious features, backdoors, so, uh, you know, they're probably there. Lots of groups are trying to engineer patches for Windows 10 spying, but, uh, you know, the easiest way is just to just don't install Windows, you know, just avoid it. Don't patch it, just don't install it. What distros are there? What can you choose from? You have a lot of choice. You have so much choice. This is a big table that I'm going to let you stare at. Uh, the activity, which I'll get to next. There's only one activity for this course. It's looking through this and picking one of these operating systems. If I was going to recommend some, I would recommend either Linux Mint if you're a beginner. If you're a bit braver, maybe Debian. Debian's a really good operating system. Yeah. Uh, also for this course, we won't, uh, don't use Hunix or Tails because it's it's much too hard to use. Uh, start on a on a regular distro and then move to Tails or or Hunix later if you want to. But yeah, anything anything from 
here open Susa above is, is okay for this course. Go for it. Yeah. There's another link there that explains a uh, bit about Linux, what it is. I've probably done a good job explaining it though. Um, and yeah, that's your activity. So pick your distro that you want to start with because in, in the third lesson of this course, we're going to be installing your first distro. All right. Uh, next lesson will be about passwords and password strength, which is an important part of GPG. All right, see ya.